I'm Levy Rosman, chess educator, YouTuber, and author. Let's answer some of your questions from the internet. This is Chess Support. At Mantosh12 asks, do chess players trash talk? That way this game would be more fun. You can't talk to your opponent during a chess game, period. So you definitely can't trash talk an opponent during a chess game. But outside of it, oh, it's some of the best passive aggressive soap opera drama you can possibly imagine. Now that we have a young grandmaster like Hans Niemann, who, despite his checkered past, no pun intended, will actually go out of his way to trash talk other people and have more eyeballs on the game. So, uh, yes, but also no. At Anna Kramling, what, you got Anna for this video? Says, is there any more satisfying checkmate than this one? First of all, hi Anna. Second of all, yes, obviously. Probably the most satisfying checkmate in all of chess is smothered mate when an opponent's king is stuck on the edge of the board, boxed in by his own pieces, and you use this knight, and you gallop into the position, and the king is smothered in the corner by his own army, while this knight attacks, and there's nothing that you can do. At Keen Chess asks, was the Hans Niemann Magnus Carlsen cheating controversy good publicity for chess? What would you make of the drama? Overall, it was a net positive for chess. There was a massive controversy between Magnus Carlsen and Hans Niemann, where the young grandmaster from the United States defeated the world champion and Magnus withdrew from the tournament, basically doing everything but directly accusing Hans of foul play. Millions of people around the globe started thinking of chess. They were hearing all of these ridiculous headlines, but at the end of the day, it just sparked their interest in the game itself. At Neophyte78 asks, okay, chess peeps, what's the opening or variation that's the most fun for you to play? One of my favorite variations to play is when I'm playing with the white pieces and I open with the king's pawn e4 and black responds with c5, which is the Sicilian defense. It's the most popular and combative opening for black fighting for the center with a flank pawn, a pawn that's not one of the two center pawns. And now I will play what's called a delayed wing gambit. I would go pawn to a3. And the idea here is very, very sneaky. You basically want to give up this pawn. So black is going to take it, and then you are going to take back. Now black is gonna say, wow, what a dummy. I just won that pawn. Now I have an extra pawn. And then you start kicking out the knight, and you get this massive center. You have a lot of pawns in the center. You can even plug another one in, and then you can use all of this open space for your pieces, and a lot of players get overwhelmed in this position. Find a chess opening or variation that you like that you understand, that gets you to a position where you know the plans better than your opponent. At Eric Farley one asks, how does the ELO rating work? I'm intrigued. And ELO is the number which quantifies your skill level. It's not an acronym. The first letter is a capital E, and then it goes LO. And the way ELO works is that it goes up and down, or stays the same depending on your results. If you're rated 1,200 and you play a 1,100, you will gain a certain amount of points if you win, but your opponent will actually gain slightly more because they're beating somebody with a higher ELO. The minimum ELO to qualify for a Grandmaster is 2,500. So an over-the-board live chess, the highest ever ELO achieved is by Magnus Carlsen. But online, Stockfish, which is the strongest chess AI in the world, is estimated to be around 3,600. At my peak, I was 2,430. Then I lost to a bunch of nine-year-olds. At Johnny CPEMS asks, how hard would Cabo Blanca be to beat? with modern preparation tools at his disposal. How good would Capablanca be with modern preparation? Ridiculously good, probably the world chess champion. Jose Raul Capablanca was one of the best chess players of his generation. He was a fantastic positional player. He was an expert endgame player as well. The only thing that he didn't do was live in the modern century in the age of computers. He managed to do all of that with chess being on paperback. Modern preparation tools are just a complete game changer. They allow you to analyze positions for 15, 20 moves in advance. The information gap from 1920, 1930 to nowadays is just absolutely absurd. An 11 year old now with modern preparation tools could probably beat Capablanca in a match just on the information that is available to the 11 year old that Capablanca in the 1920s and 30s would not know. At Anurag Singh asks, what is going on in your mind when you have to play your next move? Like, what is your mind processing? Combinations, simulations? It's a great question. Jose Raul Capablanco said, I only think of one move at a time and it's the best move. Chess is all pattern recognition. Most experienced chess players have studied a lot. They have done thousands of chess puzzles. So I might be remembering something in my memory palace. I might be remembering 
There was this game played in 2012 between Grandmaster A, Grandmaster B in this city. He was wearing a blue shirt, and in that game he played this. The more you play chess and the more you study, that is how you are going to figure out some of these good moves or an evaluation of a position. At your bud Josh asks, do old people still play chess in parks? What parks? Do you have to be old to play? I want to play chess in the park. There is no minimum age requirement to play chess at your local public park. But historically, chess has been associated with old guys at the park. When I was five or six years old, my grandparents in Brooklyn would walk me to the park where local 70-year-old men would sit there squabbling. A lot of park chess players are actually really good. The average park chess player in Union Square Park or Washington Square Park is better than you watching this right now. So go play against them. And many of them are very, very friendly. They will give you some pointers. And at least here in New York City, it's customary to throw them like three or five dollars for a game. At Sebi Lozano asks, Hey Siri, how much do chess players make? Chess players make exactly what they win in tournaments. Nowadays in 2023, there's also things like endorsement deals. Magnus Carlsen is famously sponsored by Puma. MasterCard. You can also get invited to paid corporate or speaking engagements, which a lot of them do because a lot of people respect chess players now. So it used to be that if you were outside of the top 20 grandmasters in the world, I'm not even sure you would break six figures on a good year. If you're also traveling the world constantly playing tournaments and you're just not succeeding, there is so much more pressure. You're probably losing money in a calendar year. At Mackenzie Weber 3 says, learning how to program has changed my perspective on a lot of things. How does a chess bot able to analyze an entire game and point out which moves are the best? That's so wild. Chess bots have been better than human beings for something like 30 years. Chess bots like Stockfish, Leela, Alpha Zero use really, really ridiculously powerful servers and they can analyze tens of millions of positions every single second. What they do is then they go out into the future, 40, 50 moves in many, many different branches, and they come right back and they evaluate what a move would do depending on what's out there in the future. At underscore Namori underscore fan underscore, that's a lot of underscores, says, does Stockfish blunder? No. A blunder in a traditional sense is a monumental mistake. Stockfish doesn't blunder anywhere near the traditional sense, but at times it will place a piece on a certain square and then not realize that actually 20 moves down the line that piece is not supposed to be positioned there and all of a sudden it's too late to defend itself. Stockfish has laws, not to humans, it's laws to other bots like Leela, Komodo, or Torch, but it definitely doesn't blunder like we do. At Erosin Domita asks, how does chess notation work? I'm going to bite someone. No need for physical assault. It is quite simple. If I was going to play a chess game right now, I would play pawn to d4. And the way you write that down is just the square that the pawn moved to. You don't have to write p. So it's kind of shorthand. So you would write d4. And that is what that would look like. And then your opponent would, let's say, play e6. Pawn to e6. You would write e six, and it would be d4, e6. White made their first move and black made their first move. c4, so you would write c4. Now let's say your opponent developed a knight. They played knight to f6. K is king, so knight is n. Knight f6, so it would be n, f, six. There are some moments where two pieces can actually move to the same square. For example, in this position, both of black's knights can go to d7, so if this knight went to d7, it started on b. So knight b, d7. And if this knight went to d7, it would be knight f to d7. Bonus, what if both knights were on the exact same file? Now knight b, d7 is the same exact thing, so their only differentiator is what rank they're on. So knight 8, d7, knight 6, d7. You only ever really need to do this with knights and rooks because the bishops can never go to the same square because they go in opposite colors. At Aiden B underscore says, chess prodigies are so crazy to me. How are you seven years old and beating people who spent 60 years of their lives learning chess? That's actually the beautiful thing about chess. It's a timeless game. And incredibly, 
children and adults learn chess in vastly different ways. People who start chess at a very young age have a chance of getting to a much higher ceiling overall in their chess careers. That's why you'll see at a local chess tournament, seven-year-old playing a 60-year-old. I played a chess tournament in St. Louis a couple of years ago, and I played the number four, number two, and number one ranked 11-year-olds in America, and I only scored 50%. At ADV Universe asks, what is the single piece of chess advice that help you improve the most? The biggest piece of advice that I give to kids or adults trying to learn this game is to completely disconnect your ego from this learning experience. Be prepared to lose a lot. There is no other way to get better at chess. You will probably lose three out of every four games that you play, but there are four to five things that you can learn in each of those games. If you are unable to do that because it makes you angry or upset or frustrated, then you are never going to get better at chess. At I am a Lisa Deek says, hey, what is the price take for this chess World Cup? So the price take for this year's World Cup in 2023 was won by Magnus Carlsen, and it was estimated to be something like $110,000. The Chess World Cup is actually different than the World Chess Championship. The World Cup is a knockout tournament that happens every two years in chess. It starts with 128 players and ends with two. At Rome with John asks, how is chess boxing a thing? Chess boxing is a sport that combines chess and boxing, shockingly. And essentially all it is, is a game of chess with a person and then you pause the game and you box for a round. And then you finish the chess game from the point it was started. And then you keep going until one person either wins in the chess or knocks the other out. It's a fascinating sport. And it wasn't too popular until 2022 when Ludwig, massive YouTuber, actually put on the chess boxing event. I was a part of it. I was a commentator. I thought I was going to fight, but I'm a little bit too scared of getting punched in the face. At Raud Sink asks, I still can't wrap around the concept of speed chess. How can you decide a move under a second? Form a strat, and it usually lasts under a minute. The amount of brain cells you use in this. There's no brain cells at all. The average really good chess player probably doesn't know how to make toast. There is no correlation between chess and intelligence, except in my case. Listen, speed chess is all pattern recognition. If you've seen it before, it's not always going to be a one-to-one, -one, but you're gonna have enough experience that you know what parts go where. These people can do it in two, three seconds. Speed chess is my favorite type of chess. If I have to get slowed down, then that's where I really struggle. At Saba Osman Kazi asks, where did chess come from? Allegedly, around 600 AD, in India, it was called Chaturanga, and back then the rules were slightly different, but that apparently is the first earliest recorded instance of chess, and I would know I was there. At Bison Booze asks, did chess ever change its rules? I mean, for a game that old, they must have made a few balance patches. Over the years, there have been very, very few changes to the game of chess. There are things called variants, where they, let's say, shuffle the back row of pieces, and now that's called chess 960, or giveaway, where you try to lose all of your pieces, and so on and so forth. And the last time there was really any major update is when they instituted En Passant. At Rinequan asks, bro, what is En Passant? What the hell? I just found out about this rule. En passant in chess is a rule that came out, I don't know, something like 200 years ago, and essentially all it is, your pawn has crossed the center line, and your opponent makes a pawn move and stands side by side with your pawn. They have to move two squares. For this move, and this move only, you can take that pawn diagonally behind it. The only way you can en passant is if a pawn moves two squares for this turn. You cannot do that if it was another piece. If your opponent just moved their knight to that square, you cannot en passant a knight. You would get punched in the face. At MZ Slayer one asks, chess lovers, what do you consider to be the most famous move in chess history? 1972, Bobby Fischer, Boris Spassky, World Chess Championship, United States versus Soviet Union, Cold War era. They begin the match, and toward the end game, Fischer captured a pawn and got his bishop trapped in one move. It was an oversight that, let's say, a, an amateur player wouldn't even make. It was just a complete, just mental slip for a move. Fischer captured a pawn in the corner of the board, essentially, and all Spassky had to do was move his pawn one square. And this bishop had no way out. It was a completely inexplicable mistake. Fisher had not made a mistake like that in his entire career, and he never made a mistake like that ever again. Bobby Fisher went on to lose that game, but a world championship match is played over many games. And even though he lost that first one in this completely ridiculous fashion, he actually went on to dominate and win the match. 
At Cozy Kion asks, why do chess players resign instead of taking the loss? People at the highest level resign when they know they're going to lose and they know that their opponent knows how to beat them. Most of you watching this should not resign because you never know. Stalemate is possible at the end of a game, running out of time by accident, Wi-Fi disconnecting. To resign, you would either tip over your king, which is the dramatic way to do it, you would click a button on chess.com if you were playing, or you'll see grandmasters oftentimes just pause the clock. And I would extend my hand to my opponent to shake it, which is just a silent way of saying, I surrender. At Quora Questions 4 says, what is the greatest chess match ever? The best chess match which took a long period of time, you probably have to look at 1984, Garry Kasparov and Anatoly Karpov, and back then it was decided by the first person to win six games. Karpov got out to a five nothing lead, and then Kasparov did not lose, and he defended, defended, defended. He fought to make it 5-3 with like 30 draws in the middle, and the match basically had to be called off due to health concerns. It was like two months of playing chess against each other. I would never survive. So that's all the questions we have for you today. I just wanna say a big thank you to all of you for watching chess, playing chess, supporting chess in any way, shape, or form. Until next time, thank you for watching. Chess support. <laughs>